In this video, we're going to look at a topic called fractional precipitation. Um, fractional precipitation is, um, focuses on separating ions. And in particular, it's um, separating ions um, by precipitation. So using precipitation to selectively isolate one ion um, rather than another. So what you're going to find is that the key parameter in this is the KSP. Um, and the, the KSP will determine which one precipitates first. So let's look at the textbook example. So in the example, what they basically do is they, you make a solution where you have barium two plus aqueous and you have strontium two plus aqueous. And let's just say the concentration of both in that solution is one times 10 to the minus three molar. Um, and now you add to this, uh, solution, some potassium chromate. So what we're doing is we kind of have a beaker and we have some liquid and in here we have our barium two plus and we have our strontium two plus. And then we use a burette or some other thing that we can use to measure the volume and we have a standardized solution of K2CRO4, and then we add that in. And then the question is, is will one, will one of these ions precipitate first? Will they precipitate together? Um, and then how do we know? So there are two possible precipitation reactions. Uh, one is, of course, that barium 2 plus aqueous will react with the CrO4 2 minus aqueous, giving the barium chromate solid. Or we could have strontium 2 plus aqueous react with chromate and give uh, strontium chromate. So the question is, is um, will this be a simultaneous precipitation or stepwise? One comes before the other. So let's do some calculations to to figure this out. So if we want to calculate um, if we want to calculate the concentration of these things, uh, if we want to calculate the concentration where chromate will um, precipitate, what's basically got to happen is um, we have our barium chromate reaction where barium goes uh, barium chromate goes back and forth with barium two plus plus CrO four. 2 minus aqueous. And then we have our strontium chromate, which does a similar thing. So um, there's a little plus there. So uh, the barium breaks up and forms barium 2 plus and, and chromium. And the strontium breaks up and forms strontium 2 plus and, and chromate. And we, we can write KSPs for these reactions. So the KSP in this case is going to be uh, the concentration of barium 2 plus times the concentration of CrO4 2 minus. And in this case, the KSP is going to equal the concentration of strontium 2 plus times the concentration of CrO4 2 minus. So if you look in the, the book, the KSP value for this is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 10. And then the one for um, the strontium is 3.5 times 10 to the minus 5. So just looking at this, we know that the solubility should be much higher um, for the strontium than the barium chromate because the strontium has a much higher KSP. So let's just do some, let's just do a quick calculation to see what concentration of chromium will cause this thing to precipitate. So you remember a, a precipitate forms when Q is equal to KSP. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, okay, so if we have 1.2 times 10 to the minus 10 is my KSP and my concentration of the barium is one times 10 to the minus three molar, what concentration of the chromate will 
will result in a Q becoming equal to KSP. And we can do the same thing for the for the strontium case. So we're basically, we're plugging in our concentration of the uh, barium and the strontium, and then we're saying, what, what concentration of chromate gets me to the point where I'm equal to KSP, and then, then I'll start to precipitate out. So you, if you solve this um, for X, what you get is that X is 1.2 times 10 to the minus seventh molar for this, and you get X is uh, equal to 3.5 times 10 to the minus two molar for this one. So you see that you need a much, much lower, the, the concentration of chromate is much, much lower in the case of the barium chromate. So let's think about what's gonna kind of start to happen. So as we add things along, um, we're gonna kind of draw a little graph on the next slide. So as we add things along and we, oops, can we get to the next slide? Ah. Okay, here we go. So, um, what we're gonna, what's going to happen is is the the we have the barium two plus and this is going to precipitate when we if this is concentration uh, of of the chromate this guy is going to precipitate out when we get to one point two times ten to the minus seven and then way up here we have the strontium two plus which is going to precipitate out at three point five times ten to the minus two that's way 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 up so what's going to happen is is we're going to start to gradually increase the concentration of chromate so this is the concentration of chromate uh, as we as we add in our titration so we're titrating it in we're adding moles we're adding moles we're adding moles eventually we're going to hit the concentration of 1.2 times 10 to the minus seventh molar as soon as we hit this q is going to equal k and we're going to start to precipitate And until all that barium is gone, we're going to continue to precipitate barium, continue to precipitate barium, continue to precipitate barium. And then eventually all the barium is going to get used up and then we'll have no more barium left. It'll basically have been quantitatively precipitated. There'll be a tiny little bit from the, the, the solubility, but almost all of that barium is going to be gone uh, in the solution. So we precipitate barium chromate um, out. Then what's going to wind up happening is we keep raising the chromate concentration. We're going to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. And then finally, what's going to happen is we're going to hit that strontium 2 plus, that strontium two plus concentration at 3.5 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. And then at that point, Q will equal K and we'll get a precipitate. So what's going to happen first, so step one, we're going to precipitate barium 2 plus. And then step two... As we continue to add chromate, we then precipitate the strontium 2 plus. So you could actually separate out barium from strontium by raising the concentration of chromate to the point where the barium will precipitate out, but below the point where the strontium will precipitate out. And then that will allow you to do a fractional precipitation. So this is the sort of the main um, idea behind fractional precipitation and, and this is what the textbook focuses on there's another example in the textbook that uses um, sulfide um, and lead and zinc sulfide um, and then they use um, hydrogen sulfide as a, a weak acid that allows you to tune the sulfide concentration to precipitate them out so the key point is that um, the ion with the lower KSP will precipitate first, as we showed. The ion with the lower KSP will have, will have the concentration of chromate that's the lowest, and then that one will precipitate before the other one precipitates. So that's the idea behind fractional precipitation, and we'll look at a quantitative problem that covers this exact topic um, on the next slide. Okay, so this is an example where we're going to use um, fractional precipitation to do a calculation. And you're going to see that it's very similar to what we just did, but uh, this, just, just, this just shows you what a problem might look like on the exam so that you can see what the actual setup is. So uh, you prepare, it says you prepare a solution containing a mixture of 1 times 10 to the minus 4 molar NaCl and 1 times 10 to the minus 4 molar sodium um, bromate, bromide. 
Uh, upon adding silver nitrate to the solution, which halide do you expect to precipitate first? At what silver concentration will this silver halide precipitate? So this one's a little different from what we just did, because now in this case, what we have, so just to kind of show you, oh, let me um, make this into, so what we have in this case is um, we have in our beaker um, a solution, and this solution has some bromide, and it has um, some chloride. And then we're adding to this silver, and we could, we're, we're looking to see if we can precipitate two different silver salts. So one possible precipitation would be AgCl um, coming from Ag plus plus Cl minus. So that would be one possible precipitation. And the other possible precipitation would be Ag plus plus Br minus gives... Um, Uh, AGBR solid. And then the question is, is which one is going to precipitate first and at what concentration will it precipitate? So uh, in terms of which will precipitate first, um, we can answer this easily. Uh, according to what we just talked about, um, the one that has the lower KSP is going to be the one that precipitates first. So the correct answer for this should be AGBR. Now, the reason for that is because, so the KSP of AGBR is less than the KSP of AGCL. So what this means is if the KSP of AGBR is less than the KSP of AGCL, that means that um, the silver will be less soluble in the presence of the bromide than it will be in the presence of the chloride. So we're going to hit that Q equals KSP sooner with silver bromide than we will with silver chloride. Now, the second part of the question is, um, at what concentration will this silver halide precipitate? So to do this, we have to understand that we're looking for when does Q equal K? Because that's when we get a precipitate. So to calculate that, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the KSP for um, the silver bromide, and then we're going to say, well, okay, my concentration of, of, of bromide is 1.00 times 10 to the minus 4. At what concentration will my silver, um, at what concentration of silver will this product equal the KSP? So if you solve for X, you get 5 times 10 to the minus 9 molar uh, of silver for, um, for the answer. So um, that's how you would calculate um, what concentration of the silver would cause there to be a precipitation. So now really the, cr the true correct answer to this is it's, it's at 5 times 10 to the minus 9 molar. At that exact concentration, the Q will equal the KSP and you'll be at equilibrium. So really what it is is when the concentration of Ag plus is greater than 5 times 10 to the minus 9 molar Ag plus. As soon as that happens, you'll start to form the precipitate. So as soon as you hit that concentration and just go a little bit above it, Q goes greater than KSP and you precipitate the bromide. So I hope that makes sense for fractional precipitation. Um, this is basically the last video in the series related to weakly soluble salts.